Last year, the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art welcomed one million visitors. The New York Museum of Modern Art welcomed three million, and the Art Institute Chicago, 1.6 million. These numbers sound great until you realize how many people lived in or visited these cities. 26 million for San Francisco, 69 million for New York, and 58 million for Chicago. Less than 5% of these cities, residents, and tourists went to its major art museum. People simply don't have the same relationship with visual art as they do with music and film. I play a not-so-fun party game where I ask people to name a few musicians who earned more than a million dollars from their art last year. Money is not the be-all, end-all, but it is an objective and easily understandable metric of success. Most people can get a few, with names like Beyonce, Drake, and Justin Bieber coming easily to mind. I then ask about actors or actresses and hear names like Tom Hanks, Adam Sandler, and Julia Roberts. But when I ask about visual artists, most people cannot name even a single one. When they can, it's usually Banksy, who's great, but who's substantially an outsider to the traditional fine art world. Your average person doesn't know who Jeff Koons, Jasper Johns, or Cindy Sherman are. I grew up in households that valued visual art. Both of my parents collected art, and I saw that it could bring inspiration, dialogue, and beauty to a household. And while my stepmother is a professional sculptor, many members of my family created art. My mother made lampwork glass jewelry, my aunt drew custom birthday cards, and my grandfather carved wooden birds. I saw that you didn't need to be a professional to express yourself through art, and we all did. I figured everybody grew up this way, and it wasn't until after college that I realized how unusual it was. This is why I love public art, the traditional fine art system of expensive museums, private collections, and galleries that close before you get off work is deeply flawed. Everyone can appreciate art, and anyone can make it. Street art and murals are art for the 95%. They bring visual art to the public on their own turf for free. The problem with public art is that it is incredibly difficult to create. Most painters want to pick, make, make public art want to paint murals. Many cities seriously lack the physical space for this. Most of the buildings touch, leaving no room on the sides, and many are either historic or all glass. The remaining walls are owned by landlords who are impossible to reach, and if you can reach them, they do not respect art enough to support even a free mural, and if you do happen to find someone with a quality wall and a love of art, they will hire one of a small handful of professional muralists to paint it. If you are a young artist, you do not have many options. So what do you do? Exactly what I did. Break the law. I started at a local dog park. The city had painted signs to indicate on-leash dog areas. My first piece swapped out their lumpy German shepherd for a poodle. <laughs> I love this because it didn't diminish the meaning of the signage, and so it was clearly additive. Eventually, I swapped out all the dogs. <laughs> and I even included homages to artists Keith Haring, Charles Schultz, and Jeff Koons. Through this process, I started to see spaces differently and started hoping I could lead others to do the same. If pavement can be a canvas for art, what else can be? I soon turned my eye to mailboxes. Mailboxes are wonderful canvases. They are standardized, flat, and sit on high traffic street corner. In San Francisco's Mission neighborhood, these get absolutely crushed in graffiti, an aesthetic that most people don't like and that a shocking number of people mistakenly believe is gang-related. I wanted to show that the medium is not the issue, just the message. The honey bear is a universal symbol of happiness. <laughs> it's positive, nostalgic, and inclusive. There is no honey bear gang robbing liquor stores and throwing up a Tupac bear. <laughs> I wanted to create cognitive dissonance. You realize that a piece is illegal and will go, but you like it, and you want it to stay. My hope was that by resolving this dissonance, you too started to see mailboxes <laughs> as an interesting canvas for public art. The problem with painting mailboxes is that it's a federal offense. <laughs> Some people create street art for the rush, but I, for one, never enjoyed leaving my warm bed at 2 in the morning to skulk around sketchy streets and break the law. After a year of going out every week, I wondered if there was some way to get art to the public without the midnight marauding. To this end, one Sunday, I gathered 24 friends at my house. 
I had printed and die cut onto waterproof paper 450 honey bears in 25 designs. Everyone grabbed one, a bundle of zip ties, and a map of their territory. We then jumped on the train and absolutely crushed downtown San Francisco in these things. <laughs> they were attached to light and utility poles, five per block for every major block of downtown. While this was intended to be spectacle, something fun for the public to enjoy, the real key is that as long as we remove them after two months, this was totally legal. In fact, for anybody except us, it was illegal to take them down. <laughs> this rests on an obscure passage from the San Francisco Public Works Code, namely <laughs> Article 5.6, Section 184, that supports the importance of providing a forum for communication among citizens <laughs> by permitting a sign to be placed upon any lamppost or utility pole providing the following regulations are adhered to. These regulations are highly specific, <laughs> but they're not actually that difficult. The only one I see consistently violated is number five, always remember a legible posting date in the lower right-hand corner. I call art of this form sign bombing, and it is perhaps the only legal way to get visual art to the public with complete creative control. There is no gatekeeper. You, the artist, simply make the art and put it up. Later, I did a sign bombing project with a fifth grade class. I came in with the idea that they would draw whatever they wanted on sheets of printer paper. We would laminate them, add posting dates, and tape them to utility poles. It was the kids' idea to decorate their own honey bears, and the results absolutely blew my mind. <laughs> if you live in San Francisco, please steal this idea. Get out and put some art up. If you don't live in San Francisco, check your local public works code to see if a similar law exists. <laughs> Sign bombing is but one specific example of a new way to look at public space, lamp poles as canvas. Experimenting with new ways to bring art to the public is now an explicit goal of my practice, and I have a few other ideas I hope you steal. Early in 2015, I posted an ad to Craigslist with the title, Wanted, Art Loving Lift Driver. I met Deco Carter, also known as Hip Hop Lift who gives out prizes for solving hip-hop trivia. <laughs> he gave me permission to paint directly on his car, a tricked-out Scion XB. This was a responsibility for which I was not prepared. And so I painted onto adhesive vinyl and then applied that to the car. Again, not that difficult. I designed my hip-hop Honey Bear series for this project, and it can still be seen driving around San Francisco. A Lyft or Uber car is just as public as a mural wall, and it travels all over the city. So here, the car is canvas. All children begin as artists, and they recognize a canvas that we adults, myself included, tend to forget, the sidewalk. My perspective on sidewalks was changed by Jeremy Novi's koi paintings. I love that they were meant to be viewed from above and made sense in perspective. My first win here were the fried eggs, followed by the lucky penny. I later painted both bugs and sea creatures. Unfortunately, in San Francisco, you need a permit to paint on the sidewalk, though the law may vary in your area. But there is an outstanding amount of sidewalk out there, and most of it is fantastic for painting. There are a few artists expressing themselves in this space, but not many. So please, see sidewalk as canvas. As a last idea on this topic, I want to talk to you about the ubiquitous construction fence. All of them are ugly, and many are plastered with illegal advertisements. They're also totally standardized. The walls are made of plywood panels that are typically four foot by eight foot. Eventually I realized that I could paint a mural onto my own panels and then hang them on an existing wall. Last year I prototyped this idea across from San Francisco's famous Alamo Square Park. The developer hung frames for these panels on his construction fence and then eight artists painted murals over two days. This transformed a boring empty lot to a vibrant art exhibit. These murals will remain for nine months and then will be moved to another location within San Francisco, opening up this space for another round of murals. This is the beginning of what I hope will become a rotating art exhibit with murals traveling from construction site to construction site. Construction sites are definitely canvas. I want you, too, to see spaces differently. 
Start by seeing every empty wall as a canvas for a mural, but then expand your vision to include mailboxes, lampposts, cars, sidewalks, and beyond. Public space is our space. It's our way to communicate with each other, to express ourselves, to be heard, to listen, to inspire each other, to comfort each other. There's already a ton of art out there just waiting to be appreciated, and you don't need to be a professional to join in. Grab a sheet of printer paper, make a drawing, and tape it to a utility pole. Just don't forget the posting date. <laughs> Thank you.